Hey everyone, welcome to the video. This one we're going over the nine game NBA slate for tonight on DraftKings. Before we continue though, if you guys could leave a like and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at ChrisPanel16. And if you're interested in the spreadsheets about every single night for the NBA season, links in the description below for my Patreon and my Discord chat as well, where you can get all my up to date info. Slate changes throughout the day, so. Uh, I do my best on here to project what can happen on this video and just some ideas that I have right now in the morning. But like always, things can change throughout the day. So a core play can end up not being a core play. You know, you guys get the idea. So anyway, links in the description below. And without further ado, let's get into this slate. So it's pretty decent slate. There's two games that really stand out to me right now. It's the New Orleans and Minnesota game. And then there's also the, oh, what's the other game? I forget off the top of my head. Oh, the uh, Chicago and Washington game. So I like those two games right now. So I'm probably going to try to get most of my players from that one. But we'll see. Maybe some more value opens up. My camera's not. Is it blurry? Okay, no, it's not. All right. So anyway, let's get into here. Let's get into this slate. So Carlson E. Towns at 10,700. So he's my favorite spend up if he's healthy. I don't know if he's going to be healthy. He is questionable for tonight's game. He's got a sprained left knee. They did have four days of rest, though. So hopefully he's all right. But I mean, if he's healthy. That is my guy tonight. I love this game from a fantasy perspective. It's got the highest total in the slate at 231.5. And, and we have two fast-paced teams facing off. Both teams are top four in pace of play. So this will pretty much be a track meet. Minnesota is first in pace of play, while New Orleans is fourth. And both teams are also bottom ten in fantasy points given up just in general. So we should have a pretty good game for fantasy purposes. New Orleans is below average versus centers, and we just saw Jared Allen drop four to three points versus them last night. So I think Carlson E. Towns can definitely do 60-point damage here tonight. He's coming off a 64-point game versus the Clippers, had a 60-point game versus Phoenix, so I think he should smash here. He's got a 28% usage rate on the season and is averaging 1.55 points per minute. If he gets 35-plus minutes tonight versus New Orleans, I think he can get you 60-plus fantasy points, and he also doesn't completely break the make at 10,700. It's not like he's 12K or anything. So Carlton Towns, I think he's a pretty good option tonight as long as he is healthy. We'll have to see. I don't know how I never had a sprained knee. I don't know how painful it is. So if one of you guys got if one of you guys have you could tell me. But hopefully he'll be able to play through it. And I do like that he's on four days of rest. So Carlton Towns as long as he's in, love him tonight. Joel Embiid, I will pass. Uh, Bradley Beal though, I do have interest in him at 9,500. So anytime the Wizards are on the slate, we kind of have interest in the Wizards and the team that they're playing because they play it at such a fast pace. They are just absolute trash on defense, and they're missing a lot of pieces right now. So you got to love the Wizards and then whoever they're playing on any slate that they are on. And this, dealing, this team is dealing with some injuries right now. Pretty much, uh, you know, Mo Wagner's hurt, Thomas Bryant's hurt, and then Rui Achimura's hurt. So they're going to have to really rely on Bradley Beal to stay in games. And this one features a 231 point total, which is second highest on the slate. I believe it's getting beat out by half a point in that Minnesota game. We also have a really, really tight one point spread. That Minnesota game has an eight point spread, which I really don't think I should get too out of hand. But this game's got a one point spread, so I love that from a fantasy perspective because it's going to be back and forth fireworks. And it should be a great game for fantasy purposes. Uh, the Wizards have a 116 point team total. And Bradley Bill also broke out of his little slump with some 50 point games recently. He had 58 points versus Detroit, and then 56 points versus Memphis. And then before that, he was scuffing a little bit 34 29, then 43 44. Then, you know, he came back after a couple down games. So I do like that he's back in good form 29 points and 35 points. And, you know, the volume's going to be there. He's going to be taking the most shots in the team. And if this team wants to compete, it's going to have to rely on Bradley Beal scoring a lot of points, which I think he could definitely do tonight versus Chicago. So, definitely like Bradley Beal tonight at 9,500. I do think he's a pretty safe cash game option because he doesn't break the bank and he's got 60-point upside. Uh, Drummond, he's questionable with the avocado. I don't know if he's going to play. As always, if Drummond's out, it's going to open up some more minutes like Christian Wood, uh, Thon Maker, uh, Markeith Morris, guys like that. It will also bump up Luke Kennard. And Blake Griffin's also questionable as of right now. So, again, you're going to have to see how this situation plays out. I have no idea if he's going to play or not, so I can't just sit here and act like I do know what's going to happen. I do not. So just make sure you adjust accordingly if Drummond is out. I actually don't even know how expensive Morris is today. I'm sure they bumped his price up a little bit just in case. So, yeah, he's 5,500. He's not 3K anymore. I don't know what Wood is. I think he's 5K. Yeah, Wood's 5,200. So, these guys aren't, like, even great values, and it's not a good matchup versus Toronto either. I'm sure they bumped up Kennard as well. Kennard 5,800. That's actually not too bad. So, if they were both out, I'd prefer Kennard because he's got more upside, I would say, than Marquise Morris and 
Christian Wood just from a volume standpoint. Uh, let's see what Derrick Rose is because he 6600. It's not too bad. I just don't love the matchup versus Toronto. But when Drummond and Blake Griffin are out, Derrick Rose has like I think he's like 1.5 points per minute and like over a 30 percent usage rate. So again, just make sure you keep your eyes out on the Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin news. Uh, scrolling down a little bit, uh, Damian Lillard at 9K, he screwed me last time. I played him. I don't normally play Damian Lillard, but he just fit my lineup, and he was going to be pretty chalky, so I figured I'd throw him in my lineup. Must be the UPS man. I don't know if you guys can hear my dog is going nuts out there. but uh, He played 37 minutes last game, ended up getting three quick fouls, ended up only getting one more foul, but it just, you know, it hurt, his, you know, it hurt the game flow for him. Ended up stepping up later in the game, 35 points, which just wasn't absolutely awful, but it wasn't great either. But this is a pretty good matchup versus Golden State. They suck versus guards. The bottom five versus guards. So I think Damian Lillard will be fine. It's just not one of my favorite plays on the slate. I'd much rather find the extra 500 salary for someone like Bradley Beal. And then, you know, currently in town's Bradley Beal. I prefer spend ups. And I really don't see myself playing Damian Lillard outside of maybe like a GBP. Although I only play one lineup a night. So when I say that, I'm just saying for those of you who play multiple lineups a night. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Uh, Hassan Whiteside at 8,500. Again, I played both of these two Trailblazers, and they both got into foul trouble. So I was, my lineup was looking good. I was like, okay, I got Hassan Whiteside left, and I got Damian Lillard. I should be able to get, you know, like 80 points out of these guys minimum. That didn't happen at all. They both got in foul trouble. Hassan Whiteside picked up 2,000, I think, the first, like, three minutes. Uh, at 31 minutes, which isn't too bad, but I would have liked him to get a little bit more. It was a good matchup versus Phoenix. Still got the double-double, but really not what I was looking for. But... He's okay in GPPs because he's averaging over 1.3 points per minute on the season, over a 20% usage rate. Good matchup versus Golden State. Not very good def defensively versus big men. So if you want to look his way in GPPs, you could definitely do so. But there is some blowout risk in this game. So something to keep your eye on. That's something I'd probably do in cash games at this price point. Uh, Kristaps Porzingis, he's definitely a solid option tonight at 8,300. Without Luka, he has been pretty fantastic the past two games. Uh, 51 points versus Miami, which was a tough matchup. Then 53 points versus Milwaukee. That was a softer matchup, not the greatest matchup either. And without Luka on the court this season, he's posting a 30% usage rate and nearly 1.3 points per minute. Those are pretty good numbers for someone that's 8,300. Don't love the matchup versus Boston, but they're not the greatest team versus big men. And we saw Chris Stops have a pretty good game versus Miami and Milwaukee. So 8,300, don't mind Porzingis here. He's no longer in the 7K and 6K range, so you have to think about it a little bit. But I do think he's a pretty solid option tonight because he gets such a such a boost without Luka. And he's shown that he's been pretty good as the main uh, main guy here the past two games. So don't mind Chris Stops, and he's been playing big minutes. So definitely someone I'd keep on your radar. Then in GPPs, you could look at Zach Levine. Now, he is probable. I had the questionable tag, but he is probable for this game. So, you have to imagine he's going to play. And I do like him for GPPs. I don't like him in cash games, but I do think he's a pretty solid GPP option. And, well, I might like him in cash games later on in the day. Sometimes I say that, and I ended up getting on these guys in cash. But as of right now, I'm being, viewing him as only a GPP play. It's just, I play pretty much anybody versus Washington, and I love the game stack here. And Zach Levine, he should be the highest point scorer for the Bulls here. I can see him having a pretty big game. And the Wizards ranked dead last, 30th versus shooting guard. So I think Levine should have a pretty good game here. I love his upside. I think he can get that 50-point-plus potential that he has. Uh, past few games, he's been pretty good. Scored 39 real-life points, 49 points, 31 real-life points, 43 points. Bad game versus Charlotte, but then in 25 minutes versus Atlanta, he had 49 points, 35 real life points, 48. So the guy's honestly pretty solid. So I don't mind going with Zach Levine here. I think he's a pretty solid option in GPPs. You could play Bradley Beal and you could run it back with uh, Zach Levine. I had no, no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, Brandon Ingram at, Brandon Ingram at 8K. I think he's another solid option. He's pretty much just a really safe play, and I like this game from a fantasy perspective. So I definitely want to get exposure to the Pelicans and the Timberwolves here. And he's one of the safer plays just pretty much every single night. You just know you're going to get about 40 points from him with upside of more. I mean, if you just look at his game log, it's just what he does. 41, 39, 39, 40, 45, 22 sucked, only 25 minutes versus Dallas. Then 32, 47, 39, 45. Pretty safe play. You know what you're going to get. Um, and like I said, this is a two extremely fast-paced team squaring off. Uh, highest over-under on the slate. I think a lot of fantasy points get scored here. He's averaging over 1.2 points per minute on the season. Near 30% usage rate. So Brandon Ingram, definitely have interest in him tonight. I think he's a very solid option. Then scrolling down the list here is teammate Drew Holiday at 7,800. I think he's another solid option. And again, just looking to get pieces from this game. He had a rough night last night. 
and he shot pretty poor, 9 for 28 from the field, Only that's only 32%, 2 for 7 from deep. But overtime did save him. He ended up getting 243 points. He was looking really rough, though, earlier in the game. But he does take a hit when Lonzo is starting, but he's still a solid option. He does it all in the stat sheet. He'll get his rebounds. He'll get his assists, steals, his blocks. He pretty much just does about everything. He also was a pretty good scorer. We'll have to see if Redick is starting or not. However, he is listed as questionable right now. So if he does miss, Lonzo should be starting again. That will take a little bit of a hit to Drew Holiday. But Minnesota is not very good versus point guards. And I think Drew Holiday is a pretty solid option. I think he's a safe bet for about 40 plus points. So Drew Holiday, definitely someone on my radar if you want to game stack this game. Or if you just want to play him in general, I'd have no problem with that either. Uh, Chris Paul versus Memphis at 7,500. I think he's an okay option. So it's I don't typically like playing Chris Paul. But the one time I did play him... Yeah, I think that's when he scored 50. Uh, yeah, 50 points versus Minnesota. He had 37 minutes, 30 real life points, and 50 fantasy points. And he's actually been in pretty good form right now. 60 points the last game versus Chicago, then 43, 41, 37, 35, 50. Most of these games will not knock your socks off, but he's been pretty solid. And you know, it's an elite matchup versus Memphis. They're top 10 in pace of play, so it's a nice pace up spot as the Thunder are 23rd in pace of play. And they suck versus guards. They are 24th versus point guards, 29th versus shooting guards. He's averaging over 1.1 points per minute this year. And honestly, he's a pretty solid mid-range option if you want 35 to 40 plus points tonight. So Chris Paul on my radar. Not sure if I'll get to him because he's not a fantastic point per dollar option. But I do think he's a solid play. Andrew Wiggins at 7,600. So I'd have interest in Wiggins if Towns happens to miss this game. Um, Considering this is one of the best games in the slate. And there would be a massive... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? There'd be a lack of usage on the court without uh, Carl Anthony Towns, if you guys get what I'm trying to say. Uh, with him off the court this season, he is a 30% usage rate. Andrew Wiggins, that is. And he's averaging over 1.2 points per minute. And against this awful New Orleans defense, I think his ceiling would be pretty high. And he's had two good games in a row here with uh, Carl Anthony Towns playing. 41 points, 44 points, 38 points. So Andrew Wiggins, I think he could possibly flirt with 50 points if Carl Anthony Towns happens to miss this game. So, would have some interest in Andrew Wiggins here, especially in GPPs. Just going on a bit. Uh, Kevin Love at 6,800. I think he's an interesting option tonight. So, he's not going to grade out as an elite play, as most projection systems are giving him sub-30 minutes tonight. And I'm assuming that's based on the fact that he hasn't topped 25 minutes the past two games. But they were also killed in those two games. They lost 113 to 133. They lost 108 to 125. So, of course, he's not going to get a full complement of minutes. But in the two games prior to that, they were competitive games, and he saw 32 minutes and 39 minutes. Now, the one game was overtime, but still, he was going to get 32-plus minutes in that game. So, if it's a competitive game, I'd expect him to get over 30 minutes. So, in my own projection system, I bumped him up to 31 and a half minutes, and given us a 3.5-point spread in the cast favor, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. And if you gave him the 31 and a half minutes, he's projecting as nearly a 6x value, which I think that's just fine. So he's, I think he's a very solid option tonight versus Charlotte. They suck down low. 26 versus power forwards, 29th versus centers. I think Kevin Love can have another pretty good game here, and he seems a little bit to be a little bit too cheap. So do have some interest in Kevin Love tonight, given a competitive game. Derek Rose, like I said, if all these guys for Detroit's out, you could look his way, although the price has come up just a little bit. But one of my favorite plays on the slate, I guess for right now I'd call him a core play, uh, Davis Bertans here. I just really like him tonight a lot. Rui is out, as well as Thomas Bryant and Mo Wagner, so there's plenty of minutes to go around for Bertans here. And he had a recent hot stretch where he was just unconscious from three, and he, he did cool off the past two games. But let me read you some of these stat lines the past before those uh, last two games. So he was he shot 12 threes and only hit four of them but then 13 threes he hit seven 13 threes again he hit five 12 threes he hit six 12 threes he hit eight the guy was absolutely on fire and without all these guys in the court i think bertans is going to have to have a big game here and i love him tonight he's going to get run at the power forward position and they are ranked chicago is ranked 29th versus that position they suck down low so i could see him getting rebounds as well i think a double double is definitely in the cards here and without Rui, bryant or wagner on the court this season, Bertanzo is a 22% usage rate and is averaging 1.31 points per minute. That is excellent for this price of 6,500. Love his upside in this game. I like Bertanzo in games that are fast-paced. You know, got a high total, close spread because he should be blazing threes. And that's what we get tonight. And he should get 35-plus minutes. I think he takes 12-plus threes in this game. And if he's hot, we're in for a pretty big game. So definitely like Davis Bertanzo here. Probably one of my top three favorite plays on the entire slate as of right now. Scrolling down the list here, some more 
Uh, let's see. Terry Rozier versus Cleveland. I have some interest there at 6K. I don't typically like playing Terry Rozier, but Cleveland is 29th versus point guard, so the matchup only it's the best matchup you can get besides New Orleans. So if he's going to get 30-plus minutes, which he should here, given a competitive game, I think Terry Rozier can get you 35-plus points at 6K, so I have some interest in Terry Rozier for sure. Not a core play or anything, but definitely someone I have interest in. Wendell Carter at 6K. I see he's got the questionable tag, but he is probable to go, so going to be in and I do have some interest in Wendell Carter here just getting exposure to this game he's had two solid games in a row 30 points and 35 points 38 minutes and 36 minutes and this is an elite matchup it's a versus a fast-paced Washington team who absolutely has no big run at the moment so he should be pretty fine here I expect Washington to play pretty small so Wendell Carter should be able to have a good game here they're ranked 28th versus centers and they also suck versus power forwards as well and he's been about a point per minute this season so if he gets 35 plus minutes I think he could Flirt with 40 fantasy points. I do have some interest in Wendell Carter Jr. for sure. And then, you know, Mark Cannon, Mark and nice Mark and uh, He should have an okay game versus Washington. Do have some interest there. Tristan Thompson is a great matchup versus Charlotte down low. I mean, he's kind of hit or miss with Kevin Love being in, but he should flirt with a double double. I mean, the past two games, 12 9, 18 8. I think he can get a double double. Might be able to hit 30 fantasy points versus Charlotte. I think he's an okay option. Not someone going out of my way to fit in, but I do think he's playable. Uh, Luke Kennard, like I said, if all these guys are out, he would get a bump. Draymond Green's an okay option here versus Portland. Uh, he had a monster game recently where uh, he had what, 56 fantasy points versus New York. He was in overtime, but you know he still played 39 minutes, which I did like to see. In the last game, they got blown out, so I only played 26 minutes, so I'll give him a pass there. But this is a good matchup versus Portland. They played their 23rd versus power forwards, and he's averaging slightly over a point per end of the season, and I currently have him for about 30 minutes tonight. So I think Draymond Green can get you 30-plus points at 5,800 versus Portland. So do have some interest in Draymond Green. think he's a pretty solid option. All right, Cody Zeller versus Cleveland. They're not very good down low. He's coming off a pretty big game. You could look for him. Uh, he's pretty good on a point-per-minute basis, although the minutes are really never that safe. Bruce Brown, again, if everyone's out again, you could look for his way as well. Uh, Lonzo Ball. So if JJ Redick is out, I'm gonna like. I think I can go back to the Lonzo Ball well here after a poor shooting night, but she's not really a good shooter. So most nights are poor shooting nights. But uh, it was only four for thirteen last night, one for five from three. But still played big minutes last night. Got 35 minutes, although overtime helped. But either way, he was still gonna hit 30 minutes. So I did like the minutes that he's gonna see if he's starting. And he'll do just pretty much every, just about everything in the stat sheet. So even if he does have a bad shooting night, he can still you know squeak out 25 points like he did last night, where he had eight rebounds, four assists. He usually gets some blocks and steals. So don't mind Lonzo here. Been about a point per minute. If he's going to get 30 plus minutes, you know I think 30 fantasy points is a fair projection at 5400, and I like this game a lot. So it makes sense to get exposure here. Minnesota is also 23rd versus point guards and 28th versus shooting guards, so they're not very good versus the guard position. So Lonzo Ball should be able to have a pretty good game here as long as JJ Redick happens to be out again. Then you could also look Josh Hart's way at 5,300. Price came up a little bit, but had a good game last night. Got hot from three at one point. He hit three threes in a row. Five for 14 from the field, though. So overall, it wasn't a great shooting night, but four for 10 from the three pretty much helped him there. Played 40 minutes, though. So I love the minutes he saw. 40 minutes coming off the bench, 14 points, nine boards, one steal. So Josh Hart, if J.J. Redick is out, he'd be another pretty solid option. And just staying in that game, you could look at Jackson Hayes here, because I'm going to I'm gonna go pretty far down here at this point because I want to talk about every single player on this slate but uh, where is he at yeah Jackson Hayes at 4k so I like the minutes he's been getting and I think he's a pretty solid player and you know he played 29 minutes the last game 28 minutes the game before that he did get into some foul trouble though I will say but he had a monster first half I think he had 20s was it 21 points at halftime and uh, about 0 .92, 0 0.92 points per minute this uh, season. And I love the game environment. Could see him getting 25-plus minutes tonight. So I think that's a fair assessment to assume he can get 25 to 30 fantasy points tonight. And, yeah, I just think he's a pretty solid option. And if Carlos Nate Towns happens to be out, we could look at Gorgie Dang here at 4K. He's just pretty good on a point-per-minute basis. Now, obviously, this game log's going to look ugly. But if Towns happens to be out, we could look Gorgie Dang's way. And then who's the other guy I'm trying to think of? Sorry, my thing cut out, but I think we were just talking about Gorgi Dang, and like I said, uh, it would open up if Carlton Towns was out, it would open up some more minutes for Gorgi Dang and Jordan Bell, and then Von Lee could get into the rotation as well. Then there's like two more guys I just want to talk about as value options. So we could look at Malik Monk, who is 3,300. 
he is coming off an absolute monster game where he scored, what, 45 fantasy points in 27 minutes. He actually outscored LeBron, which sometimes that happens. But he's going to be more consistent than not, so I really wouldn't count on him scoring these kind of points every single night. But it's a good matchup. Cleveland's ranked 29th versus point guard. So if he's going to give me 25 or so minutes and he continues to play well, I don't see why he can't have a good game versus Cleveland. So definitely someone to have interest in at 3,300. Not the most safest play in the world, but do think he's pretty solid. And then if you just want another piece of Washington because of all the injuries, you could look at Isa Bonga. If I can, I think he's 3,500. Yeah, I have to look him up, I guess. Oops. No, he's 3,300, so he's the same price as Malik Monk. But did have 22 points last game, 20 minutes, 6 boards, 1 assist, 2 steals, 9 points. I mean, he also has downside as well. He had 26 minutes versus Memphis, which is a good matchup. Had 7 fantasy points, so the guy is not someone I'm going to count on. But if you need a cheap option and you want to game stack this game, I could see you just wanting to take a you know, cheap piece of Isaac Bonga and maybe hope he gets 15 plus points. That's really all I can see from Isaac Bonga. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you guys with that. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, never leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. really appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at ChrisPanel16. If you're interested in the spreadsheets about every single night, links in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.